for joining us here at Venture Cafe Presents. I'm Christine Dunn, and joining me right now is the founding president of the Venture Cafe Foundation, Carlos Martinez Vela. Thank you so much for joining us here it's today. My pleasure. So, Carlos, you joined the Venture Cafe Foundation two and a half years ago, and since that time, you have helped the foundation embark on quite an expansion in and around the Boston area, but even beyond. So, talk to us a little bit about the vision. What are you hoping the Venture Cafe becomes to the community? starting from now? Uh, the Venture Cafe, when, when it started, it was just a weekly gathering. And as you point out, since then, we have expanded the mission and the vision. And uh, the mission of the Venture Cafe has three elements. To build and connect communities of innovation, to expand the definition of application and application of innovation and entrepreneurship, meaning it's not just about making apps, mm -hmm. uh, and to build a more inclusive innovation economy meaning that it's not only the usual suspects that show up at these gatherings. And we do that through space, uh, physical space, the, the space that you see back here, the, uh, the, where the weekly gathering happens. District Hall, which is the first big expansion that we had outside of this, of this building uh, in Seaport. And right now, the uh, upcoming Roxbury Innovation Center. Mm -hmm. and so space is an important, important platform. So you made an interesting point about the difference between entrepreneurship and innovation. Can you elaborate a little bit on where you see the differences are? Sure. I mean, there are two fundamentally different processes in, in the economy. Right? I mean, in entrepreneurship is about starting a new business. Uh, innovation is about doing or introducing something new. Uh, entrepreneurship can be novel, but it can also be not necessarily novel. Innovation involves uh, doing something novel. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily through entrepreneurship. It can be introducing a new technology into an existing business or a new design into an existing product or a new user interface. So it's a, it's a broader definition. Now you've been working in the innovation field, the innovation economy for a long time. Yes. What have you noticed over the years really helps to foster innovation? If you had to identify, say, three elements that you felt really helped to foster innovation, what would those be? Uh, the first one is to create conversations. So to really create spaces and platforms like the Venture Cafe, like District Hall, where people can come together and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Because innovation always starts with a story. Mm -hmm. The second is that these conversations need to be interdisciplinary and broad. Mm -hmm. uh, and really exciting things happen when you combine, for example, uh, digital technology with uh, graphic design, uh, for example, to create a new video game, or uh, electronics with uh, medicine to create a new medical device. So that's the other thing. And I think the third is the application of innovation to areas that we normally don't think about. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of innovation, whether they are social problems or poverty, for example, or... Yeah, I can uh, see how we often wouldn't think about innovation per se in that context, which I think is actually really important. I mean, one of the things Shanina Lee, one of the volunteers of the Venture Cafe Foundation brought up, was how innovation can happen in the art community and how you draw in members of that community in order to help participate in this. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about how you foster that and how you get people to think of innovation beyond just making it up? Well, one thing is to always talk about that, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm often in panels or speaking roles and I Usually, when I outline the mission of Venture Cafe, which includes expanding the definition of innovation and entrepreneurship, I always point out to my watch, for example, which is a Shinola watch, or Shinola, however you want to pronounce it, built in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I wear a tie that is Mexican design, that adopts folk art to create a contemporary design, right? So and I point at that as examples of innovation. But the other is uh, to, as, as I was uh, saying before, starting conversations, creating conversations, you bring in uh, people that help you broaden the definition mm -hmm. that we describe. How do you, as you organize your Venture Cafe events, walk that line between spontaneous conversation and structured conversation, right? How do you encourage people to kind of come together um, and foster ideas and yet create kind of that interdisciplinary structure that might help to you know, see the steps they need to take. I, I mean, if, if you come here every Thursday, you will see that all of these different facets are taking place. On the one hand, you have 
the, a social gathering, a space uh, in which there is this casual connection and serendipitous collisions as Travis Sheridan, our uh, St. Louis uh, leader, uh, calls it. But on the other hand, you have uh, things like what we're doing right now. We, uh, people in a room uh, uh, talking about something specific, or a youth entrepreneurship group in a conference room, or a, a, uh, or a whole theme gathering in which it's, let's say, women in entrepreneurship uh, venture cafe, mm -hmm. right? right? So you that's how you walk that line. I wouldn't even say walking in line, but rather creating opportunities for the different types of interactions that we're looking to create. Now, in each of the different locations that you're building out, the Roxbury Center, District Hall, and even St. Louis outside the Boston borders, do you hope to have kind of defined things happen in each one of those, or what are the missions around each of those centers? Uh, I think uh, the if we think about the mission of the Venture Cafe, it is realized in the in all of these spaces, but it takes a different shape or a different character. So then what's the shape of each one? District Hall is a much more open, larger scale, 24-7, well, not precisely 24-7, but uh, all-day space where different kinds of interactions are happening all the time, from the casual coming in to have a coffee with friends to a two-day conference for 200 people that has a reception at night, right? And you can have it going on all the time. In the Roxbury case, that program is still in definition, but that has a very specific mission in Roxbury, which has to do with building a more inclusive innovation economy. Right? How do we take the benefits and opportunities created by the innovation economy beyond places like Kendall Square or like the financial district or the innovation district and take it into the neighborhoods and create equality of access for people to live in? And have you seen demand for that coming from those neighborhoods? I mean, what kinds of programs are you doing in order to encourage that way of thinking in all the neighborhoods? So we're only beginning. So the Roxbury Innovation Center itself is not open yet. Uh, but I can tell you that there are numerous other initiatives already happening in that neighborhood and other neighborhoods that speak to this particular issue. You have uh, Crop Circle Kitchen, right, which is a place for food entrepreneurs. Uh, you have a Smarter in the City, created by uh, Gilad Rosser's Five, who it's a, it, it's just an accelerator and incubator program for local businesses that are related to technology. So we're, we're actually quite confident that there is a man. And if you uh, look at this question of the inclusion in the innovation economy, it's huge. And it's now in the minds of uh, policymakers. And I actually think that we can play a leading role in that. So when you look out a year from now, where do you hope the Venture Cafe Foundation is? What's your goal? I think it's going to uh, be maybe one or two more cities. Mm -hmm. That would be exciting to see, to have the same success that we have had in St. Louis. I think this initiative that you're uh, launching here, the Venture Cafe Presents, is going to have, be having a big impact. Because you know I actually have launched the Venture Cafe Studio. It was my idea mm -hmm. about two years ago, because I love storytelling. And I believe, as I was telling you, innovation Start with the conversation, so why don't we capture those conversations, right? So I, I really I hope that that takes place. And in general, just to achieve a, a higher level of excellence in everything we do. What inspired you to join the innovation economy to be part of Foster Hands Group? I came from Mexico in 1996 to grad school, and my interest was on the role of science and technology in the economy, particularly the role of universities in the economy. That interest through school, through research, uh, took me to, uh, around, to the innovation road, inevitably, almost. Right? So I've been interested in this for a very long time. But particularly when it comes to the Venture Cafe, it has to do with the relevance of conversations. Uh, I was part of a big project at MIT called the Local Innovation Systems Project. Mm -hmm. And we examined the role of universities uh, in the emergence of industries and innovation ecosystems, and we found an important function of universities, but not only of universities or other entities, is to create public space, to create spaces where people can come together and talk to each other and tell stories and create visions of the future of new products, of new businesses. That's always the start. I noticed that in your background you also worked at the World Bank. How did your experience there influence or did it not influence? You know, it was today? it was a summer internship, so oh. I'm not sure I can say I worked at the World Bank. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. So when you think about um, your work here at the Venture Cafe, 
If you had to change one thing, what would it be? I would, uh, I don't know, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I would change some of the colors of the room. That's one thing that I would change. Um, I think I would push a little bit harder for the inclusion agenda right now. I, I think it's something that uh, we, not only Venture Cafe, but uh, everyone who's involved in this innovation economy should be talking about uh, openly, forcefully, and in, in a very in compelling, in compelling ways, beyond some of the things that we already do like uh, social entrepreneurship. That's fine. It's an important element of inclusion, but there are other things that we can do. You mentioned that you're hoping that the Venture Cafe Foundation could help play a leadership role in some of the policy making that goes on in creating this inclusion economy. Uh, what do you mean by that? What are some initiatives that uh, that you would like to take on in order to help encourage that? So the the local team, the local Boston team, uh, is as a uh, very involved right now in the Rocks Group initiative like that. We are yet to see what shape that is going to take, but that's pioneering. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm really excited to see what comes out of that effort in terms of creating examples mm -hmm. of what can be done, uh, and new and good examples of what can be done. I think in the same way that the Venture Cafe, for people outside, they don't quite get it until they come and see it. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the case there. When we're saying we are helping build a more inclusive innovation economy, it might be hard to, descri hard to describe, but I think when you go and see it, we're going to see, see it in action. You're going to see it in action. Yeah. So I hear a lot that um, when people talk about innovation and entrepreneurship, they always talk about STEM education, and people associate STEM education with policy and fostering innovation. Is it just about STEM education, or are there certain elements of STEM education that you feel need to be emphasized more than others in order to help foster this? It is not just about STEM education. I'm troubled by the obsession with STEM education mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, it's really about creativity and, and problem solving. STEM is one element of that. I think it's equally important to be thinking about the arts, about design, about storytelling, about literature, which bring to the table different ways of thinking that are not necessarily the ways that math or science or engineering bring to the table. At the Roxbury Center, do you hope to offer some educational programs that aren't just for adults, but might be for the younger age set? I think so. It's interesting because the Roxbury Center is within the Bowling Municipal Building, which is the new headquarters of Boston Public Schools. Mm -hmm. So it's inevitable that we're going to do that. To work with not only hopefully with them but also with some of the schools in the neighborhood. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today at Venture Cafe Presents. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.